Evergreen State College is a liberal arts college in Olympia, Washington. The school has been described by now famous Professor Brett Weinstein as a different style of education. Evergreen attempted to use community-based learning as a method of mastery. This style of school is criticized by many as they don't get a standard letter grade but a narrative evaluation instead. However, we're not here to criticize or defend Evergreen, but to describe the events leading up to the controversy. Oh, oh, these racist teachers have got to go, hey, hey! Oh, oh, these racist teachers have got to go, hey, hey! Teachers have got to go, hey, hey! Oh, oh, these racist teachers have got to go, hey, hey! Oh, oh, these racist teachers have got to go! We should start with what was called the Day of Exclusion. The Day of Exclusion involved people who identify as persons of color to go off campus and attend diversity workshops. This year, however, someone decided that they should not be forced to leave campus and that non-persons of color would have to leave instead. This later caught on as being called No Whites Day, although I believe their intended term was Day of Absence. Many people at this point were perfectly fine by going along with the demands which made you an ally if you went along with them and an enemy if you refused. This tactic of bullying worked wonders, that is, until Professor Brett Weinstein, a biology professor, wrote an open email to faculty saying that he had no intention of participating in this supposedly voluntary protest. His email said, There is a huge difference between a group or coalition deciding to voluntarily absent themselves from a shared space in order to highlight their vital and underappreciated roles, and a group or coalition encouraging another group to go away. The first is a forceful call to consciousness, which is, of course, crippling to the logic of oppression. The second is a show of force and an act of oppression in and of itself. This email provoked a massive series of protests that would later evolve into a full-blown student takeover. At first, Professor Weinstein was confronted outside his classroom where he spoke with students with a level head. Difference between debate and dialectic. Debate, wait a second. No, it is. Debate means you are trying to win. Dialectic means you are using disagreement to discover what is true. I am not interested in debate. I am interested only in dialectic, which does mean I listen to you and you listen to me. You don't have to email. We don't care what you want to speak on. This is not about you. I'm talking all about him. On terms of white privilege. This is not a discussion, you have lost that one. I am talking about terms that serve the truth. Those are the top. <laughs> <laughs> You said some racist shit. Can you I did apologize? Not. I did yes, not. Did. Okay. You don't know. Things were beginning to heat up, and Professor Weinstein was told that his safety and the safety of his students could not be protected by police. This was because the school's president had instructed campus police to not get involved and to stand down. The professor then moved his class to a nearby public park where his class was stalked by protesters who considered the students still attending his class to be enemies of their cause. Students were docked on Facebook, called white supremacists. Oddly enough, many of these students who didn't believe the claims that Professor Weinstein was racist were not even white themselves. This, however, did not stop the claims that these students were white supremacists. My wife having been dragged in here, oddly, uh, in this discussion, where she wrote an email internal to our, uh, our distribution list asking the college why they were not protecting me and my students who were being actively stalked on our campus, harassed, doxxed. Which students? Uh, my current students. This would be only the beginning in what would become a national talking point. Things would begin to accelerate at the campus as a mob approached the school president, George Bridges. George tried desperately to keep this event from going national, but the footage of protesters demasculating him went even more viral. You gotta put your hands down. You know you gotta put your hands down. <laughs> yes, I. Yes, I. Fucking white guy. Is there any 
black folks any water in here? Jordan Bridges, I'm the sixth president of the Evergreen State College. I use he, him pronouns. I begin our time together today by acknowledging the indigenous people of the Medicine Creek Treaty. The president of the school was given an impromptu list of demands and forced to give an open public apology that the mob well, helped him write. This type of humiliation is downright uh, difficult to watch. If you didn't notice in the <laughs> clips, the students claimed that they found his kinesthetic speaking as being threatening. He also had to ask permission to be escorted to the bathroom. He was a hostage held there by students that refused to do their homework. All of us are students and have homework and projects and things due. I know. What's, have you sent an email out to our faculty letting them know? No. What, what's been done about that? Cake, we're all here on our own time. Yeah, yeah. Just eating cake, girl. girl. That is the first thing I'll do. I have not done it yet. But I so they need to be right told now. that these, are, these assignments won't be done on time. And we don't need to be penalized for that. I don't know the names of all the students here. We'll just say it's you know all the faculty. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm black, uh, right. black, so I know you can do it, Joe. Yeah, Joe. I speak with my hands. To the faculty need to know what's going on so that y'all can't keep doing this pointing fingers. And since I know you act like we don't have technology, y'all. Are you listening? No, she wants to keep her. How you can help? And here is a quote from the statement made by President George Bridges. Let me reiterate my gratitude for the passion and courage you have shown me and others. I want every one of you to feel safe on this campus and be able to learn in a supportive environment free from discrimination or intimidation. Mr. Bridges also promised, per the demands, to build a new equity center. According to the school's website, Evergreen already boasts four such centers. The Longhouse Education and Cultural Center, the First People's Multicultural Advising Services, the Trans and Queer Center, and the Veterans Resource Center. The students included another forceful request in their list of demands. We demand that the video created for Day of Absence and Day of Presence that was stolen by white supremacists and edited to expose and ridicule the students and staff be taken down by the administration by this Friday. They demanded that the footage that students themselves uploaded be policed and taken down from social media. There have been reports of the original video of Brett Weinstein talking with students outside his classroom having automatic removal on YouTube as it breaches their anti-harassment rules, probably for the opposite reason that it should. Facebook, of course, also removed all of the clips upon request. These students thought that they would be viewed as cultural warriors fighting an oppressive system. However, their own footage was used as evidence that they were acting like spoiled children. Here is the video that they are trying to keep you from watching. History could pivot in this hallway right now. If <laughs> oh my God! Listen to me. Yes, I know. History could, history could pivot in the direction of the values that you are standing here for. Yeah, resign. What? Resign. <laughs> okay. If I owe an apology, I will deliver it. At this point, footage had went around the world and back again. Outrage surged throughout social media demanding that there be actual consequences to these actions. That is when news came out on March 31st that Washington state representatives were starting to go through the motions of federally defunding Evergreen State College. It is incredibly frightening that the administration at Evergreen would tacitly support brown shirt tactics that we have not seen since the 1930s in Germany. That they would allow students to threaten professors and other students based on their race is simply horrifying. Congressman Manweller continued, The administration bears direct responsibility for this situation. They hired the professors who have elevated the pseudoscience of social justice to a religious movement. Now all dissent is crushed by threats of violence or actual violence. Representative Manweller has been receiving praise for many on the right for standing up to this, especially since this would remove $26 million from Evergreen's funds. 
At this point, the event had gone on long enough to prompt Professor Weinstein to appear on podcasts like Dave Rubin and The Joe Rogan Experience. This expanded the reach of this news as many still had not heard of this hostile student takeover of a college. During Joe Rogan's podcast in particular, Brett Weinstein mentioned being stalked off campus by a car of loonies that he thought were planning on kidnapping him or something to that effect. The police called me up on the Wednesday just after the Tuesday on which I had been challenged in my class and asked me, are you on campus? And I didn't have class. I said, no, I'm not on campus. They said, don't come to campus. And I said, why? And they said, because um, the protesters are searching car to car for what they describe as an individual, and we think it's you, and the college has told us to stand down, we can't protect you. What? I know. The With this broadened sense of outrage, more and more people were hearing about this daily, becoming more and more pissed off. Someone even dialed 911 to report that they were heading to Evergreen with a revolver to commit a mass shooting. To be honest, that's downright moronic. Dispatch. Hello? Hello, Dispatch. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm on my way to Evergreen University now with a 44 Magnum. I am going to execute as many people on that campus as I can get a hold of. You have that? What's going on there, you communist scumbag town? Okay. I'm going to murder as many people on that campus as I can. Sir? Just keep, it, just, keep your, just keep your eyes open, you scumbag. Okay, sir? This threat led to the school being closed for a few days. Over the time that the school was closed, the faculty released a statement themselves that aligned themselves directly with the hostile protesters. Here's a quote from the statement. Demonstrating accountability by pursuing a disciplinary investigation against Brett Weinstein according to guidelines in the Social Contract and Faculty Handbook, Weinstein has endangered faculty, staff, and students, making them targets of white supremacist backlash by promulgating misinformation in public emails on national television in news outlets and on social media. This document has since been removed likely because it would have been used to portray the faculty in a negative light. Next, the Board of Trustees of Evergreen released a statement denouncing the behavior of the protesters, disavowing the intolerance shown in the students. It is definitely the only sign of backbone within their whole infrastructure. The next day, Evergreen State College had their website deny access to their faculty directory, likely a way to prevent trolls and other concerned parties from being able to contact them. Around this day, or the following one, there was a group patrolling Evergreen campus with bats and this picture went around social media, and as you might imagine, quite a few laughs were had. But this is still not over. The following day, Brett Weinstein was sent a message by someone showing him that someone was impersonating him on Facebook and plotting to commit an act of terror at the school. He immediately notified police, Facebook, and people on his Twitter, but the image was not taken down, curiously enough. Even more curiously, videos of the protests were taken down almost immediately upon request of the students. Just something to keep in mind. There was even a strange Wikipedia war, where people on opposing sides would rotate on editing the Wikipedia page referring to the incident. This went on almost an entire day. Brett Weinstein has since left the state and moved on, looking for a job elsewhere. Brett Weinstein has taken Joe Rogan's advice and started a YouTube and a Patreon following the example of Jordan Peterson. To be honest and straightforward, Brett Weinstein is no Jordan Peterson. However, this could start an interesting trend. Even now, the controversy continues. The school made a statement saying that Professor Weinstein had returned to class. However, the professor himself has dismissed these claims, saying that he and his family have moved to a different state. In conclusion, America is watching as the culmination of cultural Marxism came to a head with real life at Evergreen. You see, this is what identity politics looks like when confronted with reality. What about our protection right now? Tired of white people talking about what black and brown people need. You don't know. I'm just trying to respond. I'm to letting you know. Oh, well, good for you. Like, come on. I'm not You're not. No, 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 no. no, no. Like they monster. fear from us. They right. fear of us trying to take mace us in the eyes and shit. For what? For us saying like, hey, Brett, you need to apologize? Because for one fucking white guy? Is there any 
think black folks need water in here? And my, I think what's smart is not to tone for these people because people are angry, and so what matters is what they're saying, not how they're saying it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Teachers have got to go!